Torgir or Torgir. Uh, sorry, my Norwegian is <laughs> lacking. Anyway, he's from Norway and he writes to me, uh, Paul, regarding preamplifiers, having capacitors in the signal path is, if I understand correctly, a bad thing. But how do you get rid of the DC components without having a cap in series? Can you please elaborate on this? In my mind, there will often be a DC component on the input, but how do you get rid of that without a cap in the signal path? Wouldn't it require some sort of advanced circuitry? Thanks. Yes, it, it, it does. So for many years, we, PS Audio, most people that uh, were our fellow manufacturers and designers, we use blocking caps. And so let me explain a little bit about what, what, what all this means. In an amplifier, especially a power amplifier, but just as important in a preamplifier, you want to amplify and output only AC, alternating current, okay? So what that means is music is AC. Music is alternating. It's a voltage, a current that it alternates between various states, and that's why we hear music. If, if it's if it's not alternating, it means it's not moving and our eardrums don't push in and out connecting to our brains and we don't hear sound. In order to hear sound, we need our eardrums moving back and forth to the air pressure. And so we have to have it alternating between plus and minus, plus and minus, loud or soft. It needs to be alternating. DC, direct current, is a steady state. And we don't hear anything, okay? That's dead silence. So for a number of reasons, audio circuitry is never quite balanced enough to not have some of that DC on its output. And if we have too much DC on its output, it can turn a power amplifier off, it can make pops and booms. We don't want it. Take my word for it, we don't want DC, we only want AC. So the easiest way to get rid of DC is to use a blocking capacitor. And that is in the signal path, you take a capacitor because capacitors will not pass DC. It's one of their characteristics. A capacitor only passes AC. And that's one of the really cool things about a cap, right? It's perfect for what we want to do. Unfortunately, capacitors have a sound to them, have a sound quality. They limit because they are not a wire. They don't pass DC, but they also, depending on their size, don't pass all the AC. So the lowest frequencies of AC um, are put through basically a high pass filter, which is the capacitor. And because they're not perfect devices, they don't always pass high frequencies so well. So for many years, we put the best capacitors in series with the output RCA connector that fed the power amplifier, we put the best sounding capacitor, performing capacitor that we could find in series to make sure that none of that <coughs> DC got through. <coughs> and that worked very well, except it had a sound to it and it was better if you didn't. Then we got, well, part of the problem with blocking capacitors, they're usually electrolytics because of the, the size they need to be we have a problem in the high frequencies. We could solve some of that by adding a very small capacitor, like a film cap, in parallel. So the high frequencies go through that little cap and the majority of frequencies go through the big cap and that's called bypassing a cap. And that's how we got better sound. But as he points out, the best sound is to not have a cap at all. How do we do that? Well, there's a number of tricky ways to do that. For the most part, we use what's called a DC servo circuit. And that is, I'm not gonna be able to explain it to you in this amount of time or in just standing here going on, but basically it's a feedback system that has usually an op amp that looks at the output, has a very big capacitor in its feedback loop so that it works at 
0.01 hertz or 0.002 hertz. Uh, very, very low, very much below a, a, a one hertz signal. So we don't hear any of this stuff. And it constantly measures the output. And when something starts rising up at that frequency, 0.01 hertz, let's say, it sends an opposing DC signal back to the amplifier and it balances itself out. And that's about it. It's usually an op amp, a couple of capacitors, some definite good design chops because I've designed a number of DC servo circuits that um, were a bit of a challenge, but today it's not that big a deal. And most amps have DC servo circuits that, that do that. And there's any number of ways to implement them, but that's basically what we do. Everything now is direct coupled. We don't have any capacitors to muck up the sound in, in the audio path. And these DC servo circuits and other ways um, are how we get rid of DC in the audio path. Okay? Hope that helped. Thanks. Bye.